What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the shop. We haven't been here in so long. I thought it might be fun to start this video uh, right here where it all began. We're not gonna be working uh, today in the shop. I've been doing some little things to the car, but recently it's mostly just been about motorcycle stuff, that four-wheeler right there, and a little bit about that go-kart right there. Mostly stuff that I, I don't think you guys are gonna be terribly interested in watching. Now, the reason we are here today, we're starting this video off with a very exciting announcement. For the second half of the season, I have brought on a sponsor. I cannot believe I'm saying that out loud, but I have brought on a sponsor uh, for the second half of the season. We're going for uh, my race at Roebling and then finally runoffs, of course. Now, they're not in the car yet because I'm still waiting on artwork, but this is so exciting. Uh, I say sponsor, but really it's a bunch of dudes who love race cars, love race tracks, and, and that's really what it's all about in the end. Uh, my buddy Rob, who you've heard me mention before with Faster Skunk Racing, um, Rob is a big Audi guy. Uh, he's got an insane RS3. Uh, it's making like 600 of the wheels. I think it's on ethanol at this point. Wild car, big wing, huge brakes. The car and driver, <laughs> Rob, they are, it's very fast. It's very fast. Now, uh, if you're an Audi kind of guy, um, Rob can help you out with some coaching. He knows the cars very well. Uh, he knows the tracks in his area very well. Um, fastest going racing link down below check it out he's got a lot of stuff going on and uh, a lot of knowledge to give now um, Rob has gotten hooked up with guys from racing for ALS now ALS is a muscle weakening disease um, and this is kind of a, a wild story because racing for ALS is two brothers one of which has ALS. Um, in 2017, they got a diagnosis. One of them has it. And uh, they said, we've been trying to get on track for a long time. Now is the time. Later is not an option. So what did they do? <laughs> they uh, went to, I believe it was Hendrix, and bought a stock car. They bought an ex-NASCAR uh, team's stock car, and that's what they've been racing with for so for a couple of years now. It's, it's really wild. These dudes are the real deal car guys, and, and that's part of why this is so cool. Um, they hold events all over, uh, all over North Carolina. They've had a ton of events so far. It's always a bunch of fun. There's always something super cool to see at these events. Um, and uh, they just, they do a lot of track day stuff. You show up with your car, you've got some food on hand, you've got some fun people to talk to on hand, and of course you've got track time on hand. Um, if you wanna learn more about their track days, the link is also down in the description. Now the important part here is they use donations, both in the way of just straight up donating and all of the proceeds, and I mean, 100% of the money they bring in goes straight to ALS research. Um, there is no cure right now for ALS. Uh, there's not even really an effective treatment right now for ALS. They do not believe it is an incurable disease, uncurable disease. They believe it is an underfunded disease. And so 100% of everything they raise, the race car, the trailer, the truck, none of that stuff comes out of your donations or uh, the proceeds from tra their track events. All that stuff straight to ALS. Since 2017, I think, they have raised almost a half a million dollars for ALS research. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Half a million dollars nearly. Um, so both Fast Going Racing and ALS are gonna be on the car for the second half of this season. Like I said, we've got Roebling coming up. Uh, and we've got runoffs, the big show. I can't even I can't even believe that we're so close. The car needs some things that I need to get done which is why these sponsors are important. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty excited to have them on the car for the rest of the season. It's gonna be a great time. Uh, now, the reason for today's video, what are we here for? Uh, we're here right now because my previous video, my just little old regional race at VIR got almost 2,000 views. It was an insane race. The footage is already up, you've seen it probably. It was a crazy race, one of the more wild races I've, I've ever ever been in i've been doing this for i've been on track for eight years now nearly uh it's it's 
an insane race, almost 2,000 views. And so it's making its way around the internet. And I thought that maybe it was important for me to put some context in the video in the form of some of my thoughts, what I was thinking about, what I was seeing, what I wanted to happen, all, all these kinds of things. So you, you really, you don't get any context just from watching the video. So no more jibber jabber. Let's jump straight into it. Uh, here are some thoughts about my single most watched video uh, I've ever posted. Welcome back to the racetrack, y'all. We have not done this proper in so very long, so I wanted to get up, make it happen, and let's get back to the old days, a proper uh, track vlog. Now, you have already seen race one. Oh, also, here's my not at all uh, over the top brand new hand cook hat. It's my new racetrack hat because look, 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 look. A couple of things to talk about here. Hand cook, hand cook, hand cook. <laughs> so, uh, you've already seen race one. It was insane. Um, it was one of the most unsatisfying races I think I've ever had. The unaware driving was unbelievable, and the close calls that were just unnecessary, unbelievable. So, I've moved past it. It is day two. I'm about to go out for qualifying for race two of my final qualifying, my final race for the weekend. Um, if you've been following along, you know that the car has not been handling well. It's still not perfect, it's still not right. Um, but I think it's better. I got some brand new tires on the car. <clears throat> um, I bought six new tires because I was so fed up with the problems. I said, throw some money at it and see what happens. And I think that it is better. I don't think it's all the way there. I talked to a few more guys. <laughs> There's actually eight B-Spec cars here to, uh, this weekend, which is awesome. I ended up fourth yesterday, or nine B-Spec cars. I ended up fourth yesterday. I really don't know that I'm gonna do any better today, but um, we'll see what we can do. New tires helped. Car is gripped up, but it still wants to push a little bit. Got some other things to check, and uh, let's just go off for qualifying, see what we can make happen. So, I got my videos a little bit out of order. This is race one, this is the start you're looking at, and you might be wondering to yourself, where are all the other cars? That's a great question. We got started late, we were held on grid, a comedy of errors, all compounded by the fact that yellow car at the front of this line made no effort to catch the pack. We are at least half a lap behind the rest of the pack. We're just stuck. So, not a stellar start to the race. You can see the black mini here hounding him. The green flag has dropped by now. We can see the yellow flags of the stations have gone and he's still not going until right here. Watch him. A million horsepower just drives away. I know, I know it's very frustrating. At this point though, turned inward. I'm real upset. I'm kind of driving the red mist. It's time to go. Watch the black mini on the right. Makes this move, gains two positions, didn't get through the turn cleanly, and so I'm able to take that back. And now I'm focused forward, focused forward. We are going to watch the first couple of laps here uninterrupted because it's real exciting. At this point, frame left, now frame right, you can just see the tail end of my race, but we're, there's traffic between us and it. It's doink. Right there, doink, right there again. He just won't go, I'm trying to get him to go. It's not working out, and right here, I'm sick of it. I don't, I can't afford to let off anymore because here we are with the Black Mini making another move because traffic ahead would not get out of the way. And right here, things get real sketch because we're catching this Porsche. Ooh, Ooh. this is a bad place to be on the brakes as a front wheel drive car, but we are cutting through traffic. These are not moves I would normally make, but we do not have time to mess around. So I'm doing everything I can to stay on this black mini and not let him get away. Chopping through traffic whenever and wherever I can. And here's the yellow car in our way once again. Very frustrating, very frustrating. Especially since he has all the power just to, just to drive away. He's gone, he's not a problem anymore. So here, I'm just trying to get a draft. I'm trying to stay in. I'm trying to get Strickland and the green Mazda behind me to catch up so that we can draft. And lo and behold, here comes this Miata, a million horsepower. I think to myself, surely he's gone and done. He'll drive away. Not quite. Not 
quite. I have hope because the black mini is tangling with this white Miata, but right here, bam. Really didn't mean to do that, but I just kept expecting him to drive past cars that he is faster than. He's just not doing it. He just won't do it. And of course, here is another piece of traffic, but maybe he can give me a draft, maybe we can pull, I don't really know. You can see the Green Miata staying behind us now. I genuinely felt bad. I did not mean to bounce off that guy so many times. I just thought he was going to go. So now the problem is this white Miata, he's kind of erratic. He's in the middle of the track. He's way offline. Don't really know what's going on, but it's kind of hard to pass someone like that because you just don't know what they're going to do. And right here, he proves it. Keeps closing and closing and closing on my right. I genuinely had no idea if he saw me. But again, I'm just trying to cut through traffic and keep up with my race since we got such a bad start. So, if you watch a conversation on the right, right there, on the right, see that? They've got a white flag out. Now, if you look way ahead, you can see a white car. That car is going so slow, they think he's broken. And here comes this red car. <laughs> watch this. It's so hard. It's so hard to watch. Oh, I just thought he was going to pass him. I know. I know, dude. It's so hard to watch. Even now, it's so hard to watch. Just the unawareness. He, that guy, The red car can't pass the white car because the white car is being so unpredictable. He doesn't want to get hit. And by now, I've all but given up on the race because it's, it's just it's so frustrating with so much traffic. And it's not over yet. <laughs> Uh, it gets so much worse. And you can see him in our mirror here trying to catch a draft. And look at him driving back by me. I'm just... By this point, my race is over, basically. As far as I can tell, I can't even see the car that I was with previously. Everyone's driven away. I don't even know that I, I even have a race left to run. So, once again, here he is being a problem. I don't know why he drove back by me, but right here, <laughs> I keep thinking to myself that he was also smoking like crazy. So I keep thinking to myself, if I can get a black flag, maybe he'll get out of the way. But whatever. Here comes Strickland with a bump draft. Just catch me talking to the crew there. Um, I remember about what I said, and almost none of it is allowed on YouTube, so I'm not going to repeat it. It's been a pretty tough race. 94 was broken. He's letting us by. Luckily, 39 sort of got the message and got out of the way, but he's still holding up Strickland behind me, so I don't know what that's about. And on top of this, remember that the car is not handling well. So <laughs> all of these problems are compounding. Uh, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Tough race. There is the slightest little bit of shimmering hope because we are catching another competitor. Love to see it. Uh, I'm trying hard to put down laps without burning up tires. Uh, but we are able to catch uh, this green car here and have a little bit of a race.
So, of course, here we are reeling in yet another car. But if you look in your rearview mirror, you hear this 3-9 car. He's inside. And I thought he was going to try to outbreak me, so I put myself offline to block him. I still can't believe that I'm dealing with this person still. Uh, but two things coming up. One, this black E-Prod BMW. E-Production BMW. And that car in the dirt on the right. They're both going to come into play soon. Now, I should not be anywhere near this BMW, but here we are. Luckily, I'm able to get by very quick. I can handily deal with him and can move on. Uh, my goal now is just to gain as many positions as possible so that um, I've got as much buffer as I can from me to the back and from me to the next car in my class. We've kind of been driving in no man's land, but if you watch this corner station on the right, the car that's been sitting off uh, has called the four course yellow. I spend the next several laps basically driving for my life, just trying to get caught up to the pack so I have a chance at the race. I've been given a second chance and I intend to take it. So this is a really funny moment that ha stuff happens in the car, right? So watch this. <laughs> I'm talking to the crew, I'm trying to count cars to figure out where everything is, and I'm, I'm well, I'm not full attention forward, <laughs> so, but here I am, I'm pointing out that yellow car up there is the one who held me up, there's all this other stuff, and the driver in front of me thought I was talking to him, <laughs> waving at him, so I had to be like, no, 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 sorry dude, not, not talking to you, not talking to you. Uh, it's just a funny moment, these are things that happen on the racetrack, drivers waving at each other, pointing at each other. So, in any case, we're headed to a restart. I had a real bad race up to this point. I intend to not have that happen again. I'm doing everything I can to keep up with this car now. At this point, I'm not even worried about what's behind me because in my mind, I have shown without a doubt that if you are behind me, you deserve to be behind me. I guess I didn't show this guy <laughs> because he drives by me. I really didn't think that would happen. Either way, I'm sticking to the bumper of this black Mini. At least, that's my goal. I don't quite have the space to get ahead and move over. So here we are, yet again, separated from the race that I need to be in by someone who I should be nowhere near. Right now, I'm sitting in fourth place. Second place is the red Sonic up there that you see, Stuart Black. Third place is the black Mini here. I'm in fourth place, I'm so close to the podium. So I'm gonna be extra aggressive here and just make moves however I can. And here's where it gets very exciting. I cut this guy off, I 
slashing through traffic. They bring second and third to me. I, my heart is pounding. It is pounding into my throat right now. Because here's second and third. They're about to go up the FLS side by side, and it does not work. It's a bad idea, but they're trying it. Hats off to Stuart Black here. He made the correct choice. I did not. He kept us out of trouble. But watch what happens with, again, this yellow car who is a problem. Shana. Contact Stuart. Poor Stuart gets screwed in this whole thing. I'm able to drive away, run over whatever body parts that was laying in, in the road back there. Crazy mix. I'm now sitting in third place. I'm on the podium. And I'm on the bumper of second place. <laughs> so my heart is going crazy crazy right now and so that's me going I'm not gonna try to pass you let's work together we need to check out at this point I know that there's not a, a ton of laps left this race is almost over but I also know that Stewart is a whole lot faster than both of us and he's gonna be on his way so I'm, I'm saying to this guy I'm not gonna fight you let's just go we need to draft and get away <laughs> we need to put as much distance between us and Stewart as we can so we get bottled up again here, again by cars we should not be anywhere near. But right here, watch this. I, I can't get off 17 to save my life. I can't get to throttle because the car is pushing so bad. And this is where that's shown, where that black mini is very slowly pulling away. Even though I've got the draft, he gets such a better run than me. You can see him just eking away. Right here at the end, I start to reel him back in because the draft starts to work. But we're we're offline, you see here. And so I'm going, I'm not gonna fight you. Go, go, go. You know, don't don't block. We need to get out of here. But we go through again, and I just can't put power down. And he drives away. And eventually I'm gonna lose the draft. Now you can see this yellow car, he's still back there, he's still real fast in the straight line, and he's coming for us. Now I'm still of the mindset that I'm going to stick with this black mini at all costs. I'm not letting go again. You can also see up there the back end of a white Miata. You recognize it, we've seen him before. This interaction is once again insane. It's just crazy. So the yellow car is a little more timid than he was. <laughs> Be a little more careful. But here we go. I think he's going to pass left, and he doesn't, and I damn near cause another crash. Look at him. Slams on the brakes, moves over, comes back over. It, it's so frustrating. I know. Gosh. And then that right there allows Stewart to come by. Stewart had a beautiful seat, watched the whole thing unfold. I had to slam on brakes to keep from hitting this dude, and that gave Stewart the head of steam he needed to freeze on by. I'm now sitting back and forth. Ugh, I know. Even now, we're a weeks removed. It's so hard to watch. It's so hard. So as we move on from that, I thought the yellow car was going to pass on the inside, and he did. He slammed on brakes, jerked to the right, and then started moving his way back left again. So I thought he was going to pass. When he slammed on brakes and moved over, I think, okay, I'm going to pass you. And then he starts coming back over, and I have to just throw out the boat anchor. And uh, that allowed Stewart to get by. And so now I'm back off the podium again. I had the podium for, what, two laps maybe? In any case, it's racing. That's how it goes. Stuart had a great seat in the whole thing. He could watch it all unfold, and he had a lot more time to plan than I did. And he capitalized on it. He made it happen. So right here, my crew is telling me that I'm sitting in third, and I have to deliver the bad news that, nope, that was a lap ago. Yellow car screwed me again. And here we are. But you can also see... Uh, how much faster than I am, uh, Stewart is. These guys, I just didn't have anything for them this weekend. Just didn't have anything for them this weekend. And here, we're heading into a little insult added to injury. <laughs> this car is broken or is getting back on track from going off. Something has happened with him. He moves out of the way, lets me by. I don't think anything of it. 
Now, I have seen him before. I do recognize the car. He's a lot faster than, than I usually am. And here he goes back by again. And I'm still not too bothered by it. It's kind of whatever. Uh, until this. Until this happens. You can see he's kind of center of track everywhere. I'm catching up to him. He's center of track here, way offline and way slow. And I get right here and I think, oh my god, it's happening again. It's happening again. Here we are. <laughs> there he goes. Fast and mean straight line and apparently nowhere else. Uh, but like I said, it's kind of just adding insult to injury <laughs> because at this point, my race is gone. Stewart and the other guys have driven away from me. I have no chance at these guys. And also, whoever's behind me is so far back that they have no chance at me. So I'm kind of in no man's land again. But it's just like, once again, there is a car who should be a whole lot faster than me. And he's a whole lot slower than me in most places. And my car's not even handling well. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. I know. Past me. I just want to give him up. Sorry, dude. It'll be over soon. What are you doing? Dude? And so at this point, just to be spiteful, I pull up next to him every chance I get to kind of be like, yeah, dude, you're screwing up. Get out of the way. And so from here, the race is pretty much done. We drive like this for a couple more laps, uh, maybe one more and the checker flag drops. The race is pretty much over. So uh, I just have one more thing to show you. So what comes up next is kind of funny racer talk. This is called impounds. We come here after the race to get weighed and allow for protests and so on and so forth. Uh, listen to this. <laughs> That's David. He just won the race very fast. He's another Sonic. He's going, y'all were right there. What happened? And so this is me explaining the whole race, <laughs> everything that just happened. Uh, it was quite a discussion. So you hear me smacking my hands together. I'm telling David the story of everything that was happening. I'm telling uh, the other VSpec guys are coming up and we're all just kind of chatting about it. But uh, another purpose for Impound, which you're about to see here in just a minute or two, is a guy in a red driver suit walk across the back of this white car here. So here he is, this guy in the red suit right here. Turns out he's the driver of the Green Miata, and he's coming to talk to me. <laughs> here he comes. And um, as you can expect, he's not very happy with me. He came over and basically was just telling me that he's really bummed at the race because this is the first time he's ever been in the car. He just got it. And apparently in one of the times that I hit him, I broke this piece of plastic across the back of the car. I had a Miata. I know exactly the part he's talking about. They are hard to find because they are prone to breaking. And so you see him kind of waving his arms there. He's just explaining how kind of how bummed he is that that's how that went. And I was explaining that I'm genuinely sorry. I honestly did not mean to bounce off of you at all especially that many times in that hard um so we're just kind of chatting about none of that really went the way either of us wanted it to 
Uh, but this is also part of what Impound is about. He came over, uh, told me he was bummed. Uh, I told him that I was very sorry. And eventually it ended with, we shook hands right here. Um, <laughs> he tells me his name and he basically says, hey, let's never meet like this again. <laughs> and I said, yeah, man, I agree. Uh, it won't happen again. And so we go on. But that was race one. That's the end. That's everything I had to show you. Uh, this video is real long and I apologize for that. But I just, after all of the views this first race got, as you can see why, I wanted to put some of my thoughts on it. Um, part two, race two, will be much shorter and will come out a little bit later. But in any case, if you like what you're watching, drop me a comment. Tell me what you thought of this action. Um, subscribe so you can keep seeing more um like it hit the bell get notifications follow me on instagram the.daily.racer all of that stuff that youtubers say uh thank you so much for watching if you made it this far you're an actual trooper uh here are just some of the things that happen on the race weekend thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video